It's your boy, Louise 21 back with another podcast for you guys to enjoy. And yet, yeah, a lot has gone on in the football world. Jose Mourinho, I can't even believe I'm saying this. Jose Mourinho is at Spurs, he's a Tottenham head coach. And yeah, I just want to thank Maurizio Pochettino for the four years of amazing football we've had, apart from the last few months, of course. But you know, people have to move on, times change. You'll have a successful career at other teams, and I wish him all the best. And he will go down as one of the best in Spurs history. Yeah, maybe he didn't win trophies, but it doesn't matter because I enjoyed the last four years regardless. And now Jose's in there, trophies will come. Well, I mean, they're better otherwise, you know. What are we going to do if Jose can't win? Um, but yeah, so I just can't believe it. Like, he's coached Chelsea, United, Madrid, Inter Milan, Porto with these teams. Um, but the fact that he's coached Chelsea just makes it weird because we're going with Spurs now. It's one of them things. Like, imagine if Arsene Wenger coached Chelsea. It's like, a, it's like you can't imagine it would ever happen. I couldn't imagine this would ever happen. And I was like, no, it doesn't suit our style of play. But at the end of the day, we've had four years of stylish football that haven't really got us anywhere. So it's time to win some trophies. Maybe it's not going to be the best football you've ever seen. But it's not like he's going to stay forever, you know. Be two or three years like he normally does. And then he'll be on the road again. Um, but yeah, guys, I've been a bit delayed with the podcasts. Um, of course, I had not in them last weekend. Last week, I was trying to get update, up to date with my videos before I went. Um, you know, I did a few vlogs. So then I didn't have much time to fit a podcast in. So yeah, I'm a week late. But yeah, I'm trying to, trying to do them every week. But here we are. Uh, no worries. Um, but yeah, I just had to talk about Mourinho. It's just... I can't believe it. I can't believe he's actually in charge. And we've got a first game tomorrow against West Ham away. And then we've got another Champions League game. We're still in that. And yeah, anything's possible with Mourinho, you know. Um, dare I say, he can do, do, you know, do well for us in the Champions League. After last year, I know. Um, that was that was just so much like tension to get there, so much stress. Then we got there and it was like, oh, and Liverpool didn't even smash us by any means. They didn't even batter us in any way. Um, they weren't even that good, you know. It was a, probably the most boring final. Not because of us, because of the way that, that they just killed the game to win it. Um, but imagine, like it's in Istanbul this year, imagine if we play... If we, I don't know, this is crazy, but imagine if we got to the final in Istanbul to play Liverpool again, and then we beat them um, on the ground where they famously came back to beat AC Milan three, like they came for three goals down anyway, and then went to penalties and they won. So imagine if we beat them at that stadium, the stadium that means so much to them, where they won it, won it in the, in the past, you know. It's just ironic, but yeah, that's just me fantasizing, imagine that happening, but I don't know, we just got to steady the ship. Um, I don't know what happened, I don't know if it's the players or the manager or the owner or all three of them, uh, but some players are going, some players are staying. We'll get some new players, I'm sure. We better, you know, some good signings in there because Poch made some good signings and some bad signings, but basically didn't make enough because it's like he wasn't given the money and they won't give Mourinho money either. Like, the ideal situation is, like, swap Ericsson for Bale or something like that. Something on that level. But I want Ericsson to go for me. Yeah, he's a good player, whatever. Yeah, he's, had, he's done his time. Um, he's been a great player for us. But this season, he just let us down. Even a bit last season, he wasn't... He shouldn't have started certain games when he did. He wasn't on form. But he started anyway, I don't, I don't know. Even this year. And Mourinho wants players that work hard. But, yeah, he just hopes... It means Kane stays. I hope Mourinho gets on with Dalielli because Dalielli is a character, isn't he? I mean, other than that, everyone's pretty well behaved. Aurier is maybe a bit mental, a bit of a nutcase. But, yeah. And I want to talk more about Nottingham this weekend, last weekend. Um, more football, yeah. I know, it is a podcast. Um, but, yeah, I've just been busy this weekend, literally. Got up, what, 7.45? I think, if you've seen the vlog, you know what I mean? 7.30 or something. 
I was up vlogging already, ready to go to Nottingham, two hour drive. We got there just about on time. Well, you could say on time, but like before kickoff anyway. But um, yeah, no, it was good timing. Got there, first game, Cheltenham All Stars. Now, they've reformed a bit this year. Like, they've taken players from other, they've got players from other teams. Um, they've added some players. I think some have moved on. But yeah, um, if you know Power Football, you know what I'm on about. If you don't, then just, you know, you're like, yay, you, doing something that makes you feel normal. Well, it's like, don't feel sorry for me, ball. That's a nickname for it in the past. Because um, people think it's just a bit of fun. It is fun, but it's, it's serious. We don't mess around. It's not like a kickabout. It's like serious National League. It's where the, where the big boys play, you know what I'm saying? And girls, because it's mixed. That's the other thing. It's quite unique. It's a mixed sport. You don't get many of them, so... Yeah. But of course the chair does all the... The, the, the physical stuff, the talking. So, it doesn't matter, you know. It's all, it's all about, like... The mental side, the chess game that it is. Um, and yeah, we lost that chess game. Well, uh, not all of us, but maybe our, our keeper in particular, particular would be guilty for that first game. Um, just a mistake. They happen, look, they were, we've all been there. Uh, but when you're in goal and you make a mistake, you... Oh, you pay. Because you're reminded of it, you know. <laughs> when you look at the score at the end of the game. Uh, a game where we took the lead with a great goal. Um, well done Jack for scoring it I think it was Jack who scored that um, but yeah so first goal 1-0 then literally I turned away to tell someone who scored because they wanted to write it down on the board or whatever so you know who scored I was telling someone else like another someone from another team I've looked back and the, because where, where the subs bench is is like behind the goal and they shouldn't be behind the goal but I just moved to the other side to talk to this other player and I came back and the ball just rolled across the goal line in front of me and I'm like, keep on, you do it. But I, I didn't know what went on. To everyone told me after, I, I hadn't even looked. And then it was just like some random shot from someone in midfield. And then like, keeper just messed it up. Um, no hard feelings, you know. You, you live and learn, that's, that's football. Uh, it's a game of small margins, and it was, you know, I think either we lost 3 1 or 2 1 in that one. But that's a game we thought we would win. Uh, if not, well, the mistake didn't help, but you know, once you take the lead, you want to go on and win it. You want to keep the lead, weather the storm, and then go from there. Um, but yeah, no, it, was, it was great to to be back at Nottingham after last weekend. Well, we finished on a high because we lost two on the last Saturday, last time we were there, but on the Sunday we won both. So, you know, from that point of view, think about it, you know, we came off some good results. Yeah, we lost in regionals and in the cup. But yet we're, everyone was ready, you know. And the second game was against uh, a quality side, really, that are like probably third or fourth. No, maybe second now, I don't know. T side, anyway, they're up there. A um, few of their players moved from other teams um, and they fought uh, to form quite a strong team. Um, that we thought, well, even I, I, be honest, looking at it from the kickoff, I thought, like, okay, we're going to get back here. We're going to struggle in this game, no matter who's on the pitch. Mistake or no mistake. Um, they scored, of course. Bit lucky. All their goals were lucky. And then we just, like, literally shocked it. Like, not everyone, but, like, shocked them, for sure, with one of the best goals I've ever seen. Like, three passes goal. You know? Even the goal in the first game was pretty good, but this goal was just like, wow. You know, take a bow, son. <laughs> Um, for one of our younger players, Dan. So well done, it was his first goal for us this season. Or ever. Uh, yeah. In in Nationals, that is. Um, so it was a great moment, everyone went mental. The other team, much the other team's despair. You know, they weren't, at, they weren't enjoying that. Their, their coach was not happy. You know, it's just... They thought they'd just smash us like 7-0 or something. But yeah, so it's 1-1. One, one. And then I think towards second half... Still what? Still 1-1. One, one. Uh, I mean, probably there's chances maybe we should have scored. Maybe they should have, and then, yeah, we gave away a penalty, but, like, unluckily. Like, by mistake, you know. And, yeah. Of course they scored it, you know. Um, but our keeper, our, our makeshift keeper was 
because we changed the keeper for that game. He was just saying to the guy who took the penalty, don't miss, you know, don't miss, otherwise you can't win this game, you know, unless you score this. But he did score, sure enough. It was an unfair penalty. I've seen them not given a lot of the time. It was just two chairs side by side, a bit of contact. It's not like he proper went into the guy, but yeah. And then the third goal was just a mistake because us trying to play on the break, like from a goal kick, our goal, goalkeeper just messed up slightly. Um, a different goalkeeper, that is. Um, trying to do a quick goal kick and then, he, yeah, it just, it's just a brain fart, isn't it? And then, yeah, they scored, but that game we really played well, that's the thing. Played pretty well considering we lost. And my other vlog, the title says that, you know. Just because you play well doesn't mean you secure the W. You don't always get that win. And then you play crap sometimes and you might win the game anyway. And then on the Sunday, we didn't necessarily play crap, but we didn't play as well, but, and then we won. But only 1 0. So, yeah, that was against a slightly lower down team towards the bottom of the table. Uh, but that was still a hard fought win. And we should have scored so many more goals. Uh, that was a lovely goal, too. I uh, can't remember who scored that one because so many goals, well, so many games. It's weird. Like, you can't keep track of them all, getting them all mixed up. But yeah, so we won that game 1 0. Not as convincing as I, I'd like. Uh, but that's how it went. And then the last game um, against Leeds, that was a big game. We're up some revenge because oh, they've just been relegated from the Premiership. So we played them the year before that and got battered like 7 0 or something. 7 1, that was when I first joined. Um, and yeah, I, I never knew they were that good. And it really, I, that's the game that really opened my eyes to the sport. No, not to the sport, but like to the Championship and these this young generation, new generation of players that I didn't know about, you know, I didn't know of because I was in the Premiership before and there's a different group of players, older players, more experienced, but drop down to the Championship and it's even more competitive with so many up and coming young players and some older experienced players too. Me, for example, you know, so it's, it's a mix and it's good. Even with our team, within our team, experience and youth mixed together is pretty good. Um, and so yeah, the last game against Leeds, all these young players, all really talented guys. As a team, Leeds love to pass the ball. So if you think of Barcelona in the, the running game, think of Leeds. And they also play similarly, similarly to my ex-team, kind of like the passing game. Pass and move and all this. And they all interchange positions, you know. But then the, the only difference is like, we, we thought we could take them on being physical. Because they're so used to passing that the physical side of the game is like petered out, the, pasted out the game a bit. What's that word? Like it, the physical side of the game is becoming less and less. There's less of it. Um, less pushing people off the ball and stuff. Um, so they didn't like that when we, we took the game to them in that sense. And they did not expect to only win 1 0. You know, we, we held them off first half. We had chances too. But then they had a lucky chance that somehow went in. I mean, it wasn't the best goal. Um, but yeah, they're a tough team and we found that out. It's just a lot of dribbling battles in midfield between our midfield players. Um, but yeah, I felt we could have scored in that game. We had some good chances to get upfield. Towards the end, we started fighting back and they were really run ragged. You know, they, I think they learned what it's like to really fight for a win because they did fight for that. And the Leeds coach after was praising us for the way we, we tested them. Because there's a team you want to learn, you want to be tested. So when you're tested, it improves your your talent. I mean, they're on down on confidence a bit, probably from last season, getting slowly back up there, you know. And that kind of win was really tough for them, you know. Um, and yeah, we weren't too happy with that. But we played well in three of the games. Well, most of the games, a few mistakes here and there, and maybe the, the, some of the teams were a bit lucky. But yeah, I thought we'd get more points. But then again, I didn't feel, coming away with only this many points, only three points, that I would still be this happy. And as a team, we are quite satisfied with the way we gelled as a team because we're still developing with these new players and integrating them more into the team. It takes time. But yeah, it's just bounced the whole time. It's like with these younger players, like, it's weird. But it's like 14 years difference. But like, it doesn't make sense to me. 
Um, but that's the sport, that's the next generation. There's even younger players than them that are coming through. Uh, the age limit in the, in the Nationals is eight, though. They're, they're like 10 and 11 or 12. Um, so, yeah, it's amazing to mix with these younger players, have them in your team, because you learn from them, and they obviously they learn from us. But we learn certain things from them. I mean, they're just fearless. Like, they don't care about... They're not scared of making mistakes, if you know what I mean. Um, in that sense, once you get to an experience level, it's like anything you do is scrutinised. Like, oh, you should be doing better, you're more experienced, you know. But then again, we've been there so many years that in terms of losing and winning, we can take both, you know. Um, but obviously you enjoy winning so much more. Losing is not fun. Yeah, you learn. In the moment, it don't feel, does not feel nice, though. Especially when you play well. Well, you play well, it's not so bad. When you play bad and get battered, it's another level of it. You know, it's just... It's frustrating because, like, you know you could have done better. But we've learned our lesson in, in, in that sense and just take the positives and take them forward. Um, I had a mate, a mate, one of my teammates here yesterday, a mate of mine, Jack, and we're just talking about that, that very thing, like, to take the positives and move forward. Learn from the negative stuff, though. Take that with you, too. But, yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting time for the team. Training this Sunday again, I might film it, I might not. We'll see. But I'm actually buzzing for it. Um, because we hadn't played together as a team for a few weeks. Quite a few weeks. I mean, there was a cup game the week before, but I wasn't at that. Uh, and then yeah, it wasn't for a few weeks we all played together as a team. One of our players was out ill on the weekend, but other than that, it was, it was a full team. There's eight of us, you know, it's difficult. And it's a four-a-side game. So it's just rolling subs, literally. Um, and we only really got one keeper. Of course, another player stepped in to be in goal after our keeper had that bad game. Um, but yeah, other than that, we only got one keeper, really. There was a point when I was in goal, and then I thought, like, I'm, I'm better off outfield, to be honest. Um, I serve the team better outfield. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not terrible in goal. I admit that. I'm alright in goal. I learned from my other team, my next team when I played in goal a few times. Um, but I've got more to offer outfield. I'd rather play outfield. I mean, in goal, you, you really learn the, 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 you know, the, what responsibility means. When you mess up, it's going in the net. And, I, and I've been responsible for a few goals that shouldn't have been, you know, in the past. And I've also made some great saves, some great games, where maybe we still lost, but I've made some quality saves. Like, I remember one game against Brighton, I, um, I met in an early goal, like, was, I wasn't at my near post, and they shot at the near post. I went far post. And, but I should have been marking the post better, to be honest. Um, and yeah, they scored. And then the rest of that half, I made some great saves, didn't concede again. And we equalised, and obviously we lost that game. But that first half just really made me realise, OK, I'm not bad in goal. Um, and the manager knew that at the time. He was like, OK, if, if the keeper's having a bad day, we might put you in there. Uh, but I didn't want it to become a regular thing. And I was in fear that it would. Uh, but yeah, serve the team wherever, wherever you asked. At that point, I did. Um, and thankfully, someone else stepped up. But I don't know if he's going to do it full time. It's difficult um, when you're so used to playing that field. And, but some players just, yeah, I'll play wherever as long as I'm playing, I don't care. And that was the initial thing. Um, but now it's like I, I serve the team better outfield. But we've got so many players that. It's like, okay, you're not going to get as long then on the pitch. It's just maths because everyone should get an equal share, really. Obviously, some players, if they're playing better, yeah, but it's pretty much equal. Um, so, yeah, and that was done, and we went home. Last game was at 1 p.m. We went home by, you know, by 3. We're on the road. And get home by, like, 5. But Sunday, I'm always knackered when I get home. Just want to, like, I don't know, Netflix or something. Right, I think this camera's running out of battery. Don't know. Right, anyway, <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> but guys, yeah, that that was an amazing weekend, and it's always quality up there in Nottingham. A bit freezing though, a bit bloody cold. You know, proper winters here now. You hear that helicopter as well, and that is really disturbing my video now. 
Okay. They're looking for someone up there. Um, but yeah, Pacho football is just, it never ceases to amaze me. Like, I always learn something new. But yeah, guys, that helicopter is gone, so I can carry on talking, yay! So yeah, Pacho football, second weekend of the season. We haven't got another one till February now, um, so a little break, but training in between, of course. Stay fresh, you know, stay in form for the next seat, next lot of games. And we've got five games on, on two of the weekends, three weekends left. And so it would be like on the Saturdays we have like three games, first being 9.15. So I might have to go up Friday night just so I don't have to drive two hours in the dark. Because like, I'll be getting up at like 4 a.m. Um, by the time I get ready just to drive up there, to be there for 9.15, it'll be like too early. But even here at like 6. Uh, it could work, it, it could be possible if my brother can be bothered or I just... Go, Dad, you take me, because he's got more patience, let's just say. And, you know, my brother's been working all week, so he just can't be bothered for nothing. Um, speaking of which, I'm a Celebrity is back on, and he's been watching that non-stop. Caitlyn Jenner's in there, Ian Wright's in there, a uh, few soap opera actors, um, someone that was on X Factor, I think, that's not even that famous, Roman Kemp, who's like the son of that guy that was in... A bat, some band in the 80s. Um, so yeah, that's interesting. Uh, I, I've always kind of watched it, but not watched it religiously. Maybe when I was younger, like when everyone, like when you're back in secondary school, like everyone's watching it. So you want to be down with the cool kids. So you got to watch what everyone else is watching just to blend in, to fit in, even if you don't like it, you know. Um, and that was the early seasons, but yeah, I'm probably gonna watch a bit of that too. And it's just funny. It's just crazy. And of course, someone like Caitlyn Jenner, you just can't quite get your head around that situation. And we're going to talk about that, but yeah, quite a funny person. Um, but it's not like I watch it, like, as I always, like, I'm a Celebrity is on. Um, anyway, for those of you who don't know what I'm a Celebrity is, it's like, it's like a game show where, like, it's not a game show, like, you, you go and stay in a jungle in Australia with like loads of other celebrities and you do challenges involving like bugs and snakes and anything that comes from Australia like this like creepy and weird in some way like some sort of trial you go through some sort of trial to win food for your camp all these famous people and week by week people vote and it gets the number of people goes down until there's one person left and they're the winner um, so Probably similar shows around the world that you've heard of with that kind of layout. But yeah, it's always a lot of the people are already famous and just trying to make a comeback, make some money, you know. Uh, some of them aren't even famous and they're on there to get famous. Um, but yeah, it's like one of them ridiculous things, isn't it? It's like drama for TV, people love it. And of course, anything presented by Anton Deck, you know, it'll get some viewership. <laughs> But yeah, I'm not going to make an effort to watch it, but yeah, every now and then. Just because Ian Wright's quite funny as well. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't recommend, well, I would recommend it, but you, you'll see what I mean by like, it's annoying at the same time. It does just annoy me sometimes. And, and there's someone from Girls Aloud as well. But yeah, still a shock that... Um, it's going on for that many years. I mean, it's popular, don't get me wrong, but like, stupid at the same time. Anyway, I mean, enough about that, because that's just annoying, but I've been trying to do more, more vlogs, but I just haven't had the time, literally. Like I said, this weekend and all this, all the busyness that's been going on. I had a blood test the other day, that didn't hurt for once. Didn't end up with a bruise on my hand. Um, but yeah. Apart from that, I mean, yeah, vlogs and a few live streams, uh, making like a montage video of some Call of Duty live streams I did, the best bits, make me look good at the game. Um, of course, yeah, like I said, my mate over, we just destroyed each other on FIFA all day. It's mental. Uh, of course, watch the Jose Mourinho interview, the first Tottenham one. Um, and yeah, I've been following up on all the, um, the Logan Paul KSI stuff. 
So Logan Paul wants to like appeal the two points they got deducted for the not for the uh, illegal punch, punching JJ when he was down, or KSI. Um, but the ref is like of another like is the best best ref. He refed Tyson Fury and Wilder, so he knows his boxing and he knows his refing. One of the top refs, so to to appeal, you know. When he's been the ref of the game of the match, it doesn't make sense because he's the top ref. If he's made a mistake, he'll admit to it, yeah. But maybe they might deduct one point. Logan says, but it's just all a load of rubbish. Just take the loss because he was being so humble and everything. Um, and JJ made a video to respond to his video um, where Logan said that like he was going to appeal and all this, and that he's not a sore loser. While at the same time, he is because he's appealing. Don't appeal the fight, just accept the loss then. Yeah, you've taken big L's before. Take this one then. Um, because being humble will make him more popular, and I said it already. Um, people are going to love him for that, for the humbleness. But appealing will just make you look like more of a meme than you already are. Uh, and JJ's just laughing at it, like, what's the point? I mean, if I've won the fight, I'd be pissed off as well. But like, why are you trying to take away my win? Um, whoever's the better boxer, I don't know. In my opinion, JJ, I had no idea he won the fight. I knew it was close. But it could not be another draw. I mean, come on. Just put it back to a draw, then they've got to fight again. Nobody wants to fight again. You know, take the win and run. <laughs> but it's not that kind of result. I mean, both guys fought heroically, so... They can only be one winner. I mean, technically, money-wise, they both won. But it's for pride they wanted to win. They had enough money and all that. It was just pride. But I'm glad they squashed the beef, like I said. But now the beef is back, really. I mean, don't be a sore loser, Logan, come on. I mean, I wanted Logan to win, but like, now okay, guess I win, congrats to him. I'm a fan of both of them, so I'm not really a diehard low, low gangster or KSI fan, but I'm a fan of both. You know? And the video Jake Paul made where he's like crying about it. Yeah, that's the initial emotion, but you're not the one that lost, mate. Yeah, you've got the same surname, but... You're not the one that was in the ring losing, getting beaten. You think you could have done better? I doubt it. I mean, KSI said, J by all means, Jake, fight someone else. Fight Gibb and then fight me two years from now or something. But for the moment, he's not doing any boxing. But it would be exciting, wouldn't it? And it'd be good for Sky Sports and Design to make more money. But no, it's, just, it's surreal that it's actually done, the fight. Um... And I haven't seen anything from my favourite UK YouTuber, Drew Geordie, about it, or about Mourinho for that matter. He'll be talking about that. That'll be interesting, but I'm still anxious to see what what happens with this whole Logan thing. Hopefully nothing. I mean, just get on with your lives. Take the loss, and KSI, take the win. The W. Um, but yeah, I've done, like... Quite a few podcasts now. What is it, like 24th one? And I'm getting the hang of it, I would say. I've gone for this location again in the mountains. It's got the best lighting. And not about the sound, like I, I want to get a better sound. Um, that's what another thing I want to improve for the live streams. I want to get a better headset. And I want to get, I just, I want to um, get like a graphics card to make um, the footage look better, like when I upload it. Because it's a bit like not HD, if you know what I'm saying. If you've seen my live streams, you'll know what I mean. I mean, if I get a graphics card, it might help. And then when I'm editing the footage after for other like for video montages for COD, uh, Call of Duty, that is. Because you just think I'm saying COD, you'd be like, what's COD? Obviously, you know what I mean if you're a fan of COD. Um, not fish and chips, that is. But yeah. I mean, podcasting is different to anything else. And sometimes I want to make like a video about certain things. Um, and then I thought, what's the point? Like, just do, do it in a podcast. Yeah, maybe the Mourinho stuff I'll put in like a separate clips, like clip, video clip from this podcast, which I've done in the past. I did it on like my fifth podcast and then like, I never made another clip from a podcast again. I don't know why, I just carried on with other videos. But I probably will do that. 
I mean, just let me know what you think of the whole Mourinho thing. If you're a Spurs fan, if you're a fan of another club, a fan of football in general, what you think? Because Mourinho is a top manager. He's won wherever he's gone. Of course, he learned so much when he was a translator for Bobby Robson at Barcelona back in the day, like in the 80s. It's been around a long time. I think about it. In 2001, he was coaching. That's like 20 years. Almost 20 years of coaching. Amazing. But yeah, I'm probably going to do that after doing another FIFA video soon. Because I haven't done one of them for a while because I've been on Call of Duty way too much. And I'll probably have to do another vlog at some point. Um, I've got another video in the pipeline based on Call of Duty. Like a montage, so stay tuned for that. Or well, if that's already out, go and watch that. You know, don't be missing out on the action. And um, it's almost three years I've been vlogging. In April it'll be three years. But yeah, since 2017. I was thinking about the other day, like, when I started YouTube, uh, the time period that was, because I was at like this employability um, event uh, for a charity that I know. Um, and it was all about employability and getting a job. And we met, met up, and it was at the GSK headquarters in Stevenage, Glaxo Smith & Klein. You, you should know, you probably know who they are. Uh, you know, they're a big pharmaceutical company. So we had this event there with all these like people from other businesses, local and uh, national, all different levels of business, right? And it was like a whole two day event where it was all about employability and CVs and stuff and getting yourself out there from the point of view of a disabled person, right? So it gave me the idea, it got me thinking, like, what am I good at? What do I like to do? Okay, I like to talk a lot. Um, I like to look at myself in the mirror a fair bit, you know what I'm saying? So why don't I make videos, like for YouTube, where I'm in front of a camera and I'm talking loads and I'm talking about what I like or vlogging about what I like, what's interesting to me. You know, I've got a background in journalism, um, so that side's all right, getting my message out there. I've learned all that in studying journalism and media. You know, what do I do a lot? I watch a lot of YouTube. So why don't I make videos on YouTube? I mean, I think I've said it before, the whole starting of it, like, I was hesitant, I wasn't sure. But after this event, I was like, okay, I'm doing this. Because, you know, the whole thing is like to find a job out of this or create one. Everyone went, went thinking, okay, let me find a job, let me apply for a job. I didn't, I created one, technically. And a lot of YouTubers say that sort of thing, like, they're not the mainstream, they went down a different route to all their friends. Uh, but, and I did. I did, I'll be honest. Um, and of course, maybe now vlogging isn't as popular as it once was, but I've adapted through podcasting and different types of videos I make. But I still make vlogs because I enjoy them, and it's something I enjoy doing, I'm passionate about. I mean, when you've got the passion, obviously you've got to do that thing every day. Or want to. And I haven't lost that. Maybe at times when I didn't get a few new subscribers. But now I'm on 92. Almost at 100. And I swear after that 100 mark, it's just going to be a lot easier. And even if it isn't, I'm going to carry on. I don't care if I'm not getting paid at this point. Because I'll get there. It's belief in that I will. If you work and work at the same craft for years, you're going to be good at it for sure. You're going to develop some skill from it do the same thing for years. And I've only been at it for years. It's not that long really. But I've made so many videos and I've learned so much about myself and others and like how you, other people that you might not know perceive you away from the disability and all that but just like in general. And I haven't had many hate comments because I'm not that famous yet but you know. They'll come but you've got to have a thick skin. The bloody phone is ringing. The blooming phone. This is growing great, isn't it, guys? It's the best vlog ever. Oh, guys, that was just so funny. It was with my grandma on the phone. You know, usual chat. Uh, keeping in touch all the time. Um, yeah. <laughs> the usual grandparents, you know what they're like. Uh, it's nice. Um, but yeah, I've forgotten where I was, to be honest, guys. 
I don't even know where I was. So, yeah. But anyway, no, I mean... She just reminded me that I was talking about my... My uh, cousin in Italy. Who had his 18th the other day. Uh, it was mental. It looked like a wedding to me. I'll be honest. I was just telling my grandma, like... Because it's from the other side of the family. So, like, different part of Italy. Um, but, yeah. It's, like, crazy they do, like, a proper cake. It looked like a wedding cake to me. It looked like a wedding, but... Happy birthday to my little cousin, 18, yesterday. Speaking of birthdays, it's one of my auntie's birthdays tomorrow. 23rd, in that case. Obviously, by the time you're watching this, it probably will be the 23rd, or after the 23rd. Um, but yeah, I've really got to like keep regular with the podcasts. I, I, I was going to stick to one subject for a while, and I had like, a topic all the time, but like too much is going on to miss out. At the moment, anyway, so much has gone on with football. <laughs> Still can't believe it. Um, I knew they'd sack Poch, but not this soon. I think they had it in the pipeline already. They had it planned. And I've been talking to my uncle a lot about it, and we discussed the whole thing. Like, you know, it's business. It comes down to business at the end of the day. They want to win trophies and make some money. But then again, I said, I mean, Daniel Levy's got other interests. The stadium and a lot more. Um, NFL that is at the Spurs Stadium as well as rugby so he's making a lot of money so how much does he care about the club I don't know um, but then again that's harsh because he built us this amazing stadium I mean so you can't doubt the guy in that sense but I don't think him and Mourinho will get on for long um, but yeah you probably just don't want to hear about that all day but no I was meant to go to Italy for my cousin's birthday that I'm talking about. He's 18th, we're meant to be there this week, but yeah. But basically guys, I don't know why they don't do flights down there, but they don't do flights in the winter down to Italy, that part of Italy. So we couldn't go really, I mean, we make a lot of promises when you're on holiday and drunk, a bit drunk, and oh, I'll do that definitely. Um, but then again, we had one of my cousin's weddings a few weeks back. I think it was a few weeks back or, no, it's next month or something. It's in December, I think. We're not going to that either. I mean, we would have had to go to one or the other. We couldn't go to both. And it's kind of unfair to skip a wedding and go to someone's birthday. Even though he's like one of my favourite cousins. And the other one I don't really care about. Like, a wedding, like, who cares? No offence, you know. Some relatives I just don't get on with or, like, don't connect with, like, don't get on with. Because, you, you know, you, you choose your friends, you don't choose your family. Um, sometimes it's all right, yay. Certain people I get on with, but I'd be like, you know, yay, my favourite cousin or something. Um, but I don't, I, I, there's no favouritism, but there's people that I don't get on with as much, basically. It's just different cultures as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would have loved to be there for his birthday. It's just another piss up, you know, because <laughs> we love a piss up and we love to eat a lot of good food too. And it looked pretty nice. I mean, I'm thinking about my 18th, like, to be honest, I hate birthdays, I hate the attention. No offence to anyone that's been at my birthdays. I just don't enjoy it, I don't know. Maybe a bit, but like I don't enjoy all the fuss, you know. Like, what do you, what do you want, this and that? Like, what do you want to eat? You know, my uncle at his restaurant will go out of his, go out of his way to make you some food. You know when you make an effort to make something so perfect and it doesn't turn out perfect? That's how it is, like Christmas Day. Um, some years it's been shit. I just don't enjoy it. Like, I enjoy the build up and then I enjoy Boxing Day the day after. But the actual Christmas Day, that you're so. You've got, you've got such an emphasis on making it the perfect day and making it brilliant that it turns out a bit boring and a bit crap because you know you can't really go. I never really go anywhere Christmas Day. I feel like weird going somewhere on Christmas Day. Maybe Christmas Eve. Even Christmas Eve is like. We don't go out, it's like stay at home, you know. Lay the table for mum and dad, you know, depending on where we're eating, it's normally over here on my grandma's. But going back to birthdays, yeah, I mean, my 18th was nothing like that. I didn't, I didn't wear a suit. At 18, I'd never worn a suit. I hate, I hate dressing smart at that age. It's not till I got a bit older, but still, I never wear a blazer and a, you know, a shirt and all that. A shirt at most, and a nice jacket or something, but not a blazer as such. But yeah, it, it was dressed nice, my cousin, for his. 18th, mine was 
at some nice fancy like hotel venue where they normally do weddings or parties. Um, there's a lot of people, like not just the main family that extended, which was quality, quality as well. Um, and in Italy, as most years, I just remember the shirt I wore, it's like a Ralph Lauren checkered, like blue and white, like oh god. Like, I still got it, but I would never wear it. No, it's not that bad, it was just a bit big for me at the time. But I wasn't good at si sizing up shirts. And yeah, it was a size bigger than I needed, really. Um, but yeah, it's just so cringe. And it's before I had any style about around shoes and like trousers, because I wore tracksuit most of the time on a normal day. I didn't have much fashion at that age, at 18, as my cousin does. I mean, I didn't wear jeans that much. Maybe I, I, I treat myself to a pair of jeans, at least. I mean, now I always wear jeans. It's just standard. Um, but back then, no. So I was like, I didn't really like dressing up. So I didn't that much. I mean, if you look back to my attic, I look a lot younger than my cousin looks now, mainly because I'm lower down, you know, because I'm sitting down. Uh, but no, I did look a lot younger than he did. It just felt different. It was a different time. It was what, like eight years ago? Eight years ago? Yeah. Man's getting old, 26. Oh, I've had so many annoying birthdays since then. I mean, the last two years have been great. They've been quality, actually. My 25th was mental. Like, it wasn't even planned to be mental. It just turned out that way. Like, my 21st, I made such an effort. Everyone made an effort and it turned out crap. Like, I, I, was, I, I was drinking before I got there. And so I didn't eat anything because I felt sick. Uh, and mainly, probably mainly because it was corona and, like, um, that will fill you up. Anything with bubbles in it. Anything fizzy will fill you up. And then you don't want to eat after that because I was really pissed. I was just trying to get pissed so badly. I don't know why. <laughs> um, but then you're around family and stuff and you realise, I want to make an idiot of myself. But I was just, I don't care, I want to try and get drunk. Didn't get that drunk anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, they made a big fuss about me that year as well. And we had, they had like a singer in as well. He impersonates some Italian singer. And that was like quite a memorable moment. Because we always look, at, look back at that. Because um, he had a bit of banter with my grandma that night. Uh, and he got, got her dancing. <laughs> classic. One of them classic birthdays, but still. Like, yeah, I wasn't too well that night. <laughs> and there, you even regret what I was wearing. I had a pair of white trousers that were way too big for me. Still got them. Well, I don't know if they're... I've still got them, but yeah. They were just embarrassing. And I had another checkered shirt. I think it was red or pink, or salmon, something like that. Even worse. <laughs> I don't know. But it was not nice, I didn't enjoy that either. What I was wearing anyway, I look back at it like, what the hell? Jesus, I mean, you can't always be at your best, can you? And style takes a few years to understand. I didn't understand it at that age. <laughs> Who does? Um, some people learn that later than others, some people never learn that. Not style, but just, I don't know, looking good. To some level. Yeah, the baggy of the trousers are more weird, I look. Just tight fitting don't always work either. Um, then it's hard to get on <laughs> and get off. <laughs> the spray on jeans, nah, I can't be doing that. Need, need, nah, I need some air down there, man. No spray on jeans, please. I mean, my brother will go there, I mean, but because he's a eunuch and he has no, no bits down there, so he's fine. Like, there's no, nothing getting strangled or blocked in any way but now I can't be doing that <laughs> so yeah I remember my 18th I, I, I was I drinking yeah maybe I mean I already drunk a bit but I, there I was like I don't know I was quite young for an 18 year old I was cheeky but I wasn't like go and get pissed all the time go around and make myself a few beers you know, but I wasn't like going out of my way to be mental in any way that was pretty normal in that sense. Uh, I probably got worse with age, like more likely to get arrested for something as I've gotten older, even like now. Like you can't trust me, you know what I mean? You now when I was 21, that was a crazy hero as well. I, it was just something about acting crazy. I mean, my generation, we've like seen Jackass and all these shows where they just get injured for nothing, like all that stuff. There was a time when, you know, uh, 
at school if you smashed up a bus stop. You, you weren't just an idiot, but you were like praised everyone else for being that mental that you smash a bus stop up. Like what? That's, that's the most stupid thing. Um, but yeah, like when I was 21, I was just, after that birthday, I realized how bad it went. Because I didn't actually drink that much in the end. Because I felt ill, like I said. Um, after that, I just, when I got back to England, I just was getting drunk every time, every time, every chance I could. And got in trouble, well, didn't get in trouble, but we made up a story for one of the nights when it was me, mate of mine, my cousin and my brother here, just down in tequila. So, well, and other things, but um, tequila was the main culprit that night. But yeah, on my birthday now, there was no tequila yet. Um, that was before that, on my 21st, I'm saying, but I don't know what I'm going on about birthdays. It's just a lot of birthdays at the moment. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, my 18th, I don't even remember that well, but I remember the presents and the money people gave me, because in Italy, they go crazy. And then, fast forward to this year, I had it in England, it was a bit quieter. I say I don't like all the attention, but I missed it at the same time. It was a lot quieter this year. I mean, back in London, it was a bit different. Um, I could vlog it in and upload it the next day. And I had a trip around London with my, my parents, which, yeah. I had no choice really because they want to celebrate it with me. But I would have done my own thing, but why would I do my own thing? It's my birthday. And then my brother caught up with us later. But it was calm, you know? It's a calm birthday. And of course, last year, yeah, that was crazy because I went from one town in Italy to another to meet up with some other friends and family. Friends mainly, but um, that was crazy. Then I, I met up with a friend of mine for her birthday, like a few days later, on the 3rd of September, I think it was, because we were staying till the 5th or something, because uh, we had a wedding on like that weekend at some point, yeah, like before we left, we had a wedding. So that's why we were staying that late into that, early, that late into September, basically. Because normally, we're, beginning of September, we're gone from Italy, we're back to England already, but not that year. Um, being my 25th, that was mental, and yeah, I did a crazy vlog that day, that was fun. One of the most memorable vlogs, to be honest. And at the time, my brother was, he started going out with um, one of the friends of my friends from Italy, basically. One of the, the girls we knew from the town. So that was like, all like exciting, and like, I felt like, even though it was nothing to do with me, I felt like I kind of helped him in that sense. Cupid, you know what I'm saying? Even my friend were like high five each other, like, yes. We, we, we got them together, you know what I mean? Thanks to us. And then, yeah, but yeah, that didn't last long. Um, but my brother won't appreciate me talking about that. And I, I get a bit personal, don't I? I just say some shit that I didn't even, check, even share with anyone. But that is a podcast. And my brother don't watch many of my YouTube videos anyway. The bastard that he is. <laughs> I mean, come on, like, why, why aren't you... You know, I ask you how your date is, why can't you watch my videos? And maybe he does, and maybe he is watching this right now. If you are, you're a nunce. Um, yeah. Birthdays, man. You only get once a year, you only get it once a year. And you make that effort to enjoy it, and then you don't. Maybe some people do, but I don't enjoy Because I've got like, it'll be like 40 people in Italy. Too many. It's mental, it's crazy, but... In a good way as well, but yeah. It's hard to comprehend. I just don't know what's going on on that day. Can't hold a conversation with anyone because everyone's talking at you. You know, gi giving you all these gifts. You've got to say thank you and all this. And then my uncle would come up with some sort of surprise. Like fireworks or something. Or the, like the, the guest singer. It gets me shook more than anything. To get all paranoid, like, what's the surprise? Like, jokingly, I said to him, yeah, strippers, please. And I was actually nervous that he's actually going to bring some strippers. And my grandma's there, and it's like, and my aunties and uncles, like, come on. Don't actually want a stripper. I'll go to a strip club, maybe. But I won't. <laughs> I, I will, no way. No way. But there was a, a chance that he could have. I don't put it past him. I would not put it past him. I could probably 
will one day, like, if I actually say it, it probably will. But, like, come on, not for a birthday with his family around, you know. <laughs> so that time I was proper nervous, like, what's the surprise? I was just some fireworks. And I was actually disappointed in the end, I was like, oh, where's the strippers? <laughs> with a giant cake. <laughs> I saved that for Amsterdam. Well, I still haven't been there, I still want to go. Just, I haven't got the opportunity yet. Annoyingly. Um, we were planning a little trip there, but then it didn't work out. Certain people didn't want to go and stuff, and like... Some of my brother's friends didn't want to spend the money. Like, he had the idea of this nice hotel and everything. But they were like, nah, they were going to do it the cheapest way. But if you know anything about my brother, you know... He likes to splash the cash. Like, if he can do it the expensive way, he will. And be comfortable and all that. He'd rather than... What? You know... Live in... A, stay in a hostel, you know, or something. Some cheap two-star hotel. Now he likes to do it in luxury. Like, when he goes away for work... He does ask them to put him up in the best hotels. And it has to have a gym. You know? At least, otherwise he doesn't stay there. Is that level of fussiness, but that's an Italian thing, it's not just, yeah, or that's a mass thing, I don't know, I don't know, brothers, you know, you don't get to choose them, you're stuck with them, but yeah, I mean, crazy, I mean, I had so many birthdays there, I lost count, like, it gets a bit repetitive though, it's always at my uncle's restaurant, like, and it, every year he's asked me about a cake, it ends up being an Inter Milan cake because he knows it's what my Italian team is Inter Milan. I was like, I mean, or, or it's a Tottenham cake, or it's something else. One year I had Pink Floyd, I think that was last year. Um, but a lot of people didn't get why that was on there. Like, so why why is this on the front? Like, it was, there's a Pink Floyd album cover, it's like a rock band, typical rock band album, uh, album cover that. that that is like weird and doesn't really make any sense unless you know of the band, you know. It was like Battersea Power Station, which is on the cover of a Pink Floyd album called Animals. Um, the one where it's like they, they set off like an inflatable pig above Battersea Power Station and it like floated around London for ages. Anyway, you wouldn't get, most of you won't get that unless you like Pink Floyd. But yeah, that was on my cake um, and people didn't get it, a lot of people, my aunties and stuff. You obviously wouldn't know about rock, didn't get it. Um, so then, from then on, it's just been an interman. One year, my uncle wanted to put like a picture of a model on a cake. I was like, come on, did this kid's present. This old people present, you know. Have some decency. But that's my uncle for you. Proper banter every year, man. But yeah, I mean, almost every birthday I had in Italy. Almost every birthday. It's just unreal. I had one or, one or two here, but I just remember the ones in Italy, how crazy they are. And yeah, of course, last year, all that travelling, like, oh, I celebrate my birthday and travelling. But it was 24 hours of celebrating my birthday, because even the night before, 27th, when it hit midnight, um, we're hanging out with some of my other cousins in a car park, as you do. We're like, oh, it's my birthday. And my brother had known this, and he had a bottle of champagne in the car, or Prosecco, whatever it was, it was warm, but it did taste good, that was good. I'm like, oh, it's my birthday, so I celebrated at that moment, then I celebrated, of course, the night of the 28th, and then I, I went to see my other, fr my friends in this other town, and celebrated again, really. So it was 24 hours of celebrating my birthday. Or like, well, it felt like a week, actually. Um, <laughs> but you know what I mean, that was, that was crazy. Normally just one thing and that's it. And yeah, you know me, I'm always up for going out and getting smashed or partying in some way, you know. Um, but the people around me aren't always, I'm just more down for that stuff than my brother is sometimes. Like every time I've gone clubbing with him, I've been like, we've got to go more often. He's like, nah, fuck that. And he doesn't want to go. Because just typical like same old stuff, same old shit, different day at a club, innit? It's like, oh, they're all too young and all this. And they're all crazy, they're all off their heads. But that's why I go, because it's like crazy. But yeah, but as crazy as I am, I've got a limit, obviously. I've got to go within boundaries. 
or get yourself injured, you know, in my case it can be quite serious, end up in a hospital, you know, spend enough time in them anyway. Don't want to just be there out of being, getting some drunk incident, you know. It can happen. Um, but yeah, I get a bit aggressive when I drink as well. My brother says I've become a bit of a dick, but I was like, I'm a dick anyway, you know. What kind of message are you trying to send saying that? But yeah, I am a bit, and I get a bit loud as to say that, and I can't drive in a straight line, obviously. It's drink driving, literally, with this chair. And that is the, the worst joke you can ever make. Because um, I make that joke myself, I mean, don't make that joke at me when I'm the one saying it. Because technically it is drink driving, but you, you're allowed to, I believe. Just not in the middle of the street, because someone, well, a mate of a mate of mine, got nicked for driving in the street drunk. <laughs> it's something I've always wanted to do though. Not get nicked, but drive in the street drunk. Provided there's not many cars, you know. In Italy they will run you down, they will kill you. you go about 50 down to 30. 30 zone, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, would, I wouldn't, wouldn't do that in Italy, that's for sure. I do generally fear for my life when I'm crossing the road in Italy or driving in the road because the pavement is all broken. I don't get that fear here. I mean, people will, most people will slow down. Even here they're mental, but... You know, look at all the cyclists out there. They've got to be mental to pedal on, to use a bike on the road here, like, come on. You're risking your, 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 your head, literally. Your head will get knocked off. Or you'll be squished by some buses. <laughs> yeah. If you're a cyclist, I mean, you've got to be, you're, you're brave. Credit to you, because you've got a death wish of some kind. <laughs> got nothing against cyclists. I'm not making any sort of statement. But yeah, I think that's about it for today, guys. Probably a bit shorter than usual. But every time I say that, it's around the same time. My vlogs, my podcasts seem to be around that same time every time. Um, but yeah, I want to thank you guys for joining me again. For me just nattering away about random stuff. Football and everything in between. From birthdays to weddings to my family that's just crazy and... It's unlimited amount of stories. But yeah, Christmas is going to be lit. Because uh, i got my uncle and my aunt coming over. And we had fun with them last year. Despite my cousin not coming over as well. That was fun anyway. Uh, and then my other uncle and his wife coming over from Italy as well. So on my mum's side that is. Um, and they're bringing the, the door as well. So that'd be fun, another cousin. i got too many cousins. Um, that'll be in March, though. That'll be after, like, um, Christmas. But, yeah, should be lit. We've got a few other people over Christmas that we don't normally have. Friends, you know, because it's normally just family. But, yeah, it's going to be a bit different this year. And try as I might to keep up with the vlogs over Christmas, it never works. It never works, does it? You know just as well as I do that it's going to be crazy. And I'll probably vlog when we get the tree or something. But we'll see. We'll see. That's it for the podcast. Don't know if this is number 24 or 23. Maybe 23, 24. I don't know. Anyway, good luck, Jose Mourinho, for the games coming up. Um, good luck for your time at Spurs. Good luck, Pochettino. May the future be bright. And happy birthday to my cousin. And whoever else's birthday it is. Um, thank you, guys. I'll see you in the next podcast or on the next vlog or live stream or whatever. But most of all, enjoy whatever you're doing and take it easy um, and just live life to the fullest. Um, and tomorrow is another day. Take it easy fam, peace. I am out of here. If I could not crash into this desk or this bench. Okay.